Today we're going to be covering how to find slant asymptotes in a rational function. And we talked about this yesterday. And I believe, Audrey, you said the reason we know there's a slant asymptote is because the numerator is one degree higher than the denominator. Okay? And so since we know that, we know we are not only going to have a vertical asymptote, we are also going to have a slant asymptote. Now, the vertical asymptote is very easy to locate. How can we figure out where the vertical asymptote is located? By making the denominator zero. That's right. So, Liz, what number could you plug in there to make the denominator equal to a zero? Two. Two. Thank you, Liz. All right, so we have a vertical asymptote. We do not have a horizontal asymptote because this is, this denominator, this degree is greater than that. So we don't have a horizontal, okay? But we do have a slant asymptote. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this concept called synthetic division to find it. Synthetic division is an easier way to divide this denominator into this numerator. If we were to do a long division, here's what, don't write this down what long division would look like. Ready? We would do x minus 2, and then we would divide that into 5x squared minus 10x plus 1. We're not going to do that. That's called long division. We're going to do what's called synthetic division, which is a little bit easier. Okay? So what I'd like you to do, I need you to label how many x squared we have, how many x to the first, and how many x to the zeros. And by the way, all of these numbers right here come from everything that's in the numerator. So everything that's in the numerator, that's how we label these. So how many x squareds do we have? Who wants to answer? Raise your hand. Go ahead. Five. Five, correct. How many x to the first do we have? Go again. One. A ten. Negative 10 is correct. All right. How many x to the, one more time. One. We have one x to the zero. Very good. So we have we got the five, the negative 10, and the one from the numerator. That's how we got those numbers. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is the factor that we're checking is this x minus two. Is that divisible into this? But if this is the factor. We're not going to use a negative 2. We're actually going to use a positive 2, which is known as the root. All right? So right here, we're going to check to see if this number is divisible into this equation, right, this expression. So does anybody remember the first step that I'm going to do in the synthetic division positive? Bring the first number down. Bring the first number down. So we're going to bring the 5 down. Once we bring the 5 down, you always bring the first number down. Just bring it down. Not change it. Just bring it down. What are we going to do with this positive 2 and this 5 Myra? You're going to multiply it times the That's right. So we're going to do 2 times 5, and you're going to say that's a positive 10. Positive 10. Very good. That's positive 10. Then, what are we going to do with the negative 10 and the <coughs> positive 10? Together and what you get? Yeah. A whole lot of nothing. Then we take the positive 2 and we do what with it, Myra? You multiply it times the 2. And you get? 0. 0. And then what do we do with these? You're going to add them. Add Probably them. One. And you get a 1. Now, normally you have to worry about the remainder when you're doing this. If, if, you're, if, the, if the question was, how many times does x minus 2 go into? 5x squared minus 10x plus 1. But here, I want you guys to understand, in this process, when you're trying to find a slant asymptote, you can actually ignore the remainder. So right now, I'm circling it, and I want you to understand, you can ignore whatever you get as a remainder. The only thing you have to worry about is these two numbers right here, the 5 and the 0. Now, the 5 and the 0 mean absolutely nothing until you understand what this column means and what this column means. 
the five refers to the number of x's that go into the five x squared minus ten x plus one. The zero represents the constants or the x to the zero. This is your x to the first, this is your x to the zero. What I want you to understand is we don't have to worry about that one because it's zero. Okay? But we do have to worry about this one right here. How many x's do we have? Five. Five. We have five x. Our slant asymptote is y is equal to five x. This is your slant asymptote. So what we're going to do, we now have the answer to two questions. This is your slant asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at what? x equals 2. And we have a slant asymptote at y equals 5x. Now the question to this one was just determine the slant asymptote. So all you had to do was find this. But what I'd like you to do now is turn your graphing calculator on. What we're going to do is we're going to graph this. So I want you guys to see the slant asymptote in action. So here we go. If y equals type in alpha, y equals enter to get your numerator and your denominator. Type your original numerator, 5x squared minus 10x plus 1. And in the denominator, I'd like you to type in x minus 2. So type that in is exactly as it appears. Once you've done that, hit the graph button. Yes. So if it start, if it just start by alpha pi, I have to charge them over the weekend. If you start seeing it's getting low. It's getting yeah, getting low. Getting low. Okay. Once you've graphed it, hit y equals, and this time I want you to type in our slant asymptote. Type in five x. So we're going to type in a 5 and an x. And you're going to hit graph and you will see that now you have that asymptote that's really, 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 really close to your graph. What else, what else did we say we had going on here? We didn't just have a slant asymptote, we had a what? Vertical. And where's the vertical asymptote located? At 2. Okay. So right here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw it in. So right here, at a 2, here's our three graphs here, all right? So this one right here, I just drew in by hand. This represents our vertical asymptote, so write the word vertical. This right here, that was our equation y equals 5x, that represents our slant <laughs> asymptote, and the blue graph I know Brandy, it's kind of hard to see, but think of it just hugging that right there. This blue graph right here that you saw originally, that was your y equals, it was 5x squared minus 10x plus 1 over x minus 2. So that was your graph. The asymptotes are the boundaries of the graph. Okay? And you guys are going to have a quiz where you're going to be responsible for finding all the asymptotes. So you guys know how to use synthetic division. All right, now some calculators, some calculators have this app, number five, called the N equals app. It's the inequality graphing app, all right? If you use this app, you can actually scroll up here to where it says X equals and press enter, and you can type in and X <laughs> equals a number. It says Y equals, all right? So I'm going to change this color over here. I'm going to change it to... Uh, Orange color. Since I did orange. There we are. Changing it to orange. And now, if I hit graph, we'll see the original equation. We'll see the slant asymptote. And you'll see the vertical asymptote drawn. Okay? So if you wanted to do do that, you have to use the apps button and go to number five on on my calculator. I don't know what it would be on yours. There's a different one. Alright, so you can also go second format and go down here to where it says detect asymptotes. And right now you can turn it right now you can turn it on. And you 
might see it covered up. Right now, it's kind of covered it up with some blue lines. Okay? So I'm going to go and turn it, turn it back off. All right. All right, so here is how you would set up. I'm not going to do number seven right now, just a second. Here's how you would set it up for synthetic division. You start out with the number of x squared. Then you leave out, then the next thing is x to the first thing, x to zero. This right here is what's in the numerator, all right? So we figure out what's going on in the numerator. What do we put here? We put... The, the root that goes from the denominator. So here you're going to put in a negative one. Here you're going to have a positive one. Here you're going to have a negative one. Here you're going to have a zero. That's how you set it up. Miranda has volunteered bravely to help solve number seven. She's brave. She's, she's rated herself seven out of ten confidence level. We will see how she does. Please be quiet. Be respectful of her braveness. What do you think the very first thing we're going to do, Miranda? Um, That's right. I'm going to bring this one down right there. Then what do you think we're going to do? That's correct. What did you get? That's correct. Right. Then what are we going to do with these guys? That's right. And you get? That's right. And then we're going to multiply. Negative one and the negative two get multiplied together and get negative. That's right, positive two. Then what are we gonna do with these guys? That's right, and you get a but right here, I don't care about the remainder. So what am I gonna do to this remainder? I'm just gonna ignore it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna kill it, I'm just gonna ignore it. Alright, so right here, this I saw a lot of you all. I saw a lot of y'all get to this. So now, I, now this is where you kind of get stuck. Like, well, what do I do next? So let me explain real quick. Hopefully you will understand this. If this is a 2, then the very first number is going to be 1 less than that. So this represents x to the first. It's how many x to the first you have. If this number right here is a 1, then this represents how many x to the zeros do we have. So it's always one degree lower. lower. One degree lower. So understand, how many x's do I have? How many constants do I have at the end? So my answer is x minus 2. No, you're like, x minus 2 what? This is where your slant asymptote, y equals x minus 2, is your slant asymptote. And right now, what we're going to do before the video ends is we're going to check to see if what we did <laughs> looks correct. All right? So quickly go to your graphic calculator because we only have a minute and a half left. Hit y equals. Miranda, I still need your help because I haven't memorized the equation yet. All right? So right here, I'm clearing this out. I'm going to hit alpha y equals enter. And what am I going to put in the numerator? X squared minus x. What am I going to put in the denominator? X plus 1. I'm going to hit the graph button. Now, something you should notice. Uh-oh, I need to go back real quick. So in your graphic calculator, this is what you see. Now, what did we say our slant asymptote was for this one? Y equals X minus 2. Hit the graph button, and you should see a slant asymptote basically getting really, really, really close to that rational function. What is our vertical asymptote located? So at negative 1, where X is equal to a negative 1. So you should be able to see right here that we also have a vertical asymptote located right here where x is equal to a negative 1. So there's your vertical asymptote at negative 1. There's your slant asymptote at y equals x minus 2. And the blue graph 
is your rational function. 